Opie Face with Colour In. Well, time for a bit of colour, tone and texture. All right, you should have some pencils somewhere, hopefully. We're going from all the pinks through to the blues, greens and into the yellows and reds. That's our primary, secondaries and tertiaries. We're not worrying about tertiary browns and beiges. And we won't worry too much about black, whites and greys yet. Let's get rid of those. Let's have a look at our colour choice. It's up to you what colours you do, but we're looking at colour harmonies. We might use reds. Uh, we might use different versions of reds, of course. There isn't just one. Uh, there are types of blues, and there are many different types of colours you can use. You have to decide the colour combinations and colour harmonies you want to use. I suggest you don't use all of them. That would be crazy. Well, you're going to try and do something a bit like this painting, using colour, tone and texture in the background and foreground. Perhaps complementary colour scheme is a good idea, like this yellow against violet. The violet here is, of course, going from white to black as much as possible, and very flat in the foreground. We're going to work in your sketchbooks. I'm going to demonstrate with the one in the reverse of the book. You can trial yours if you want on your practice one in the back, but really you need to work on the finished one in the front. I want to keep yellow in mind, and I'm going to use a combination of the different yellows and whites. I think I'll be using that for the flesh tone. You can decide what colours you want to use. I think yellows and whites together will make it very bright, and those warmish colours are going to stand out as well. Now, obviously, if I want to use a complementary colour scheme, I'm going to have to use purples and violets, and I'll use those, I think, in the background. So I'll make the figure stand out. I've got some very dark, rich purples to use, and I'm also going to probably try and use the black as well at some point. Now you may not have this many pencils, you don't need that many because you can blend. But I've got a few, they're not expensive. Now, test your colours. Get a scrap piece of paper or the back of your book and trial them first. Just because the colour of the pencil on the paint necessarily means the pencil inside is that colour. I'm playing around with the blacks and the purples and violets and the whites eventually as well. I want to see what they do. Remember, complementary colour pairing, purple against yellow. You can have red against green, orange against blue, or any colours opposite on your colour wheel. I'm deciding what I want to keep. One of those is a bit dark, I don't really like it, it's very similar to black. I have a choice what I might do with the shirt, of course, and the hair. I'm not going to use all the colours, but I will use some colour harmonies, some relationships. Analogous colours, complementary colours, probably not triadic, but I probably will experiment with monochrome. So what I'm going to do now is have a look at my tonal range. I've got my yellows down the bottom, some is a bit orange, but those yellows against purple, they stand out quite a lot. And I can travel from white to black through my colour. Well, here's a whole range of colours I want to use. I'm going to use some yellows for the flesh tone, for the skin. It's going to be on the neck, the face and the ears. I've got these orange colours. Analogous colours are going to be part of the shirt. They blend well. And of course, in the background, I'm going to use these violets and purples and use a monochromatic colour scheme as well. It's about colour, tone and, of course, texture. We want the figure, the face, the portrait to stand out. Right. Let's start with... The middle. It's easy to start in the middle. If you do the outside, you're going to wreck your drawing by leaning your scruffy hands all over the top. Now, if you had any common sense, like I told you, no heavy pencil lines. These faint pencil lines are enough for the time being. If you've got heavy pencil lines, they're going to blend with those light colours and they're going to ruin it. There's me speeding up, of course, because I like to draw quite fast. Now, it's about texture as well. The surface quality, dappled, smooth, flat. Decide what you want. I don't want something too smooth. I quite like using these pencils. I'm blending some white down first to overlay some of the yellows I'm going to use a little bit later. So it won't be completely flat, but it'll be bright and it'll stand out. And of course, a tonal range, yellow against white, isn't that bright, but later on we're going to change that quite a bit. Now, once I've finished the ears and the face, I can move on to do the shirt. Remember, blending is a good idea. Now this is going to take you more than a couple of lessons, so hopefully you can come back to this video from when you need to. A reminder, the flesh is the face, the ears and the neck. Shouldn't be anything else really. 
You can probably go over the nose and the eyebrows. You'll still see them when you've finished. Done a lot of the face. I'm working now on the shirt and I'm blending my oranges and playing around with light and dark tones and textural qualities as well. That'll do for now. Now let's have a look at the next part. What I want to do is start playing around with the background to see if I can make it stand out. Just like this one. I'm going to go from light to dark. It's called a vignette, like a halo of darkness around the edge of the picture. So I'll start with my white, and my violets, and my black. I'm going to take the black out of the way for the minute, and the darkest of the violets, and just use the light purple and the white. I'm going to put a little base of white down to start with, so I can have a more pastel violet colour. It shouldn't take me too long. But I'm going to use a different texture. I'm going to scribble and scroll with the pencil. Lots of circular motions. I want it to stand out and be different from what's going on in the foreground. You can experiment in a part of your book or on a scrap piece of paper. Now, again, we're asking you to use pencils here. Not felts, no highlighters, nothing at all like that. Not wax cranes, not pastels, not yet. Pencils first. It'll take you two or three lessons. I've got a bit of give if I go over the lines. When we finish this drawing, we're going to use a nicker or a marker or a felt pen to outline this. Remember, this isn't observational drawing anymore. We'd call this a stylized drawing, a bit like pop art. Julian Opie's pictures you've seen already, well, he didn't use pencils or paints. He created them digitally, and you can do that as well. But today, it's about using pencils. So again, what I'm trying to do is use my mid-range low purple there and just scroll and scribble all over. I don't want the white paper to come through though, and I can get rid of that a little bit later. Let's move on to the slightly darker one now. Now it looks quite dark in comparison, but it's still purple. What I'm going to do is keep this, com uh, this um, I'm going to try and keep this texture in the background slightly different from one in the foreground. And you can already see it's getting lighter and moving into a darker tone already. You don't have to use this technique. You can cross hatch, you can stipple, you can experiment, you can do what you want. I'm going to put a bit of black on just to try and demonstrate how it's going to look a little bit later. And of course, I keep going back with my purple and blending as much as I can. And that's my violet and purple over the top. From the head, I'm going from light to dark. Like I said before, like a halo, we call it a vignette, if it goes all the way around the outside. Hair. Well, I'm going to keep with my analogous colour scheme for the figure. And if you travel from orange through yellow, eventually you'll get to green. So I'm going to use a variety of greens here to try and mimic the hair. And that's it. Takes a bit of time, especially if you uh, don't jump ahead like I did. It's going to take you at least two lessons to do that. Probably more, three or four. It's different from the painting, but it's not quite finished yet. Here's how we finish. Get rid of your pencils. Go and find a nicker, a felt pen, something similar. If you haven't, you'll have to wait. Bit of scrap paper. This is a bullet edge. So a bullet end, sorry. And what that means is you have a genuine thickness all the way through. You might want to double the thickness, of course, as you go. But it's a permanent marker. Try it first. Any mistakes you make on your drawing are going to stay there. I think I'm going to start with the eyes. Get yourself a piece of scrap paper just to protect your drawing. A reminder, the eyes aren't massive, not too small. Go back to your Julian Opie research to see. If you can't see your pencil lines anymore, you've got a piece of tracing paper with the image still on it and you can overlay that over the top. Be very careful with eyebrows. You can end up with giant slugs crawling across your face. Try and stay within the lines this time. It's not often we'd ask you to do that, but certainly for this task. Remember the nostrils are teardrops on the side, radiating outwards. There we go. And of course the mouth, the middle line under the top lip, is twice as long as the little shadow line underneath the bottom lip. That's up to you how thick you go, of course. You can see your Julian Opie pictures. And now we outline the rest. Shouldn't take you too long. Don't rush it, but don't go too slowly. You end up with some rather messy lines. Be very confident with the strokes you're drawing. Now, by the time you finish this, 
your drawing will probably be done. It's going to take you a while. The results are amazing. And the colours are wonderful. Top stuff, Murph. Well, that's what it looks like. Once you've finished, you've got a photograph.